just about set to go now. And today's starting pitcher, Luis Severino. What's the scouting report on him? Yeah, and his whip tells you he's been pretty effective this year on the mound. I mean, opposing hitters having a hard time Lead getting on base and then being Houston. able to really the distract him and do damage in terms of getting around the base path. So, so taking the mound, this is a guy you want out there if you're his teammate, and I expect him to be good in this one. Strike two. Clearly was sitting on a fastball right there and just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for his commitment. Now he's just going to have to two battle with two strikes. Two strike. That's outside. Now two and two. Wouldn't oh, chase that time. Three, two. Swing and a miss. Got him to go up the ladder for the K. Typically, that high fastball, if it's close to the top of the strike zone, a hitter, if he's prepared for it, can get to it. But that one just had that little jump at the end, which indicates there's a good spin rate on it, and it didn't decrease in velocity as that hitter's internal clock would expect it to, and that's why you see the swing and miss. And now it's Alex Bregman. He swings and hits a fly ball. Center field. Makes the grab. Two away. Now we check out the Astros lineup. Chris, this is an offense that puts the bat on the ball. Tough outs pretty much throughout the lineup, and they have fewer strikeouts than any other team in the league. Yeah, Boog, and I just remember as a player, when you're going up against a club like this, it keeps you on your toes all game long because you got to make plays for your pitcher on the defense. And so an offense like that can really put some pressure on that defense. So they can swing the bats, put it in play, but I also think if they run the bases hard, it adds another element to their game. And another ball. You rewind and think back to those Giants teams that won three world titles. They were pretty good contact-based teams. Swing and a miss, and he got him. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. Nothing doing there for Houston. Now the Mets offense will go to work for the first time. No score. You're dialed into the show. Back here in Queens. On the hill here today, Spencer Aragetti. And Chris, pitching on the road has not been particularly kind to him. Yeah, and you don't want to be too quick to say that he can't pitch on the road. Sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of luck. It's not having a feel. Difference between the bullpen mound to the mound out there on the playing field. I don't know what it is, but I know this. He's got good enough stuff to overcome and get it done on the road as well as at home. So we'll see what he's able to do in this one. Blows the high heat past him. That's a strikeout. Thought it was a pretty good pitch. Top of the strike zone. We're seeing more fastballs in that location. Hitters, especially with two strikes, have to be ready to pull the trigger. Here's Brandon Nimmo. Chopped to the right side. Duvall. And here this afternoon, two quickly away in the bottom of the first. Let's take a peek at the Mets lineup here. They're facing a pitcher today who's prone to giving up homers, so we'll see. We might get some big swings here today. Yeah, I think the key, though, and the reason why he gives up those homers is that guys are locking in, they're aggressive, and they have a high confidence level. So I think if that's the approach these hitters take, with the stuff he's got there on the mound. Oh, now this is drilled to center. Way back there, on its way, and gone. He'll touch them all. It's 1-0. He absolutely crushed that one. No doubt about that one, Bill. We knew it wasn't coming back. That home run was a no-doubter as we dive into the numbers with stack pads. Crushed. They just absolutely crushed. 112 miles per hour on the exit velo, and like you said, no doubt about that one. Plenty of launch angle to give it that backspin as well, and that carried way over the wall. Here's Pete Alonso. Next Ray pitch ball. misses one way break. outside. Righty to the plate. 3-1, and he couldn't come up with it. 
One of the things about that two out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have a very aggressive secondary lead. So a ball down the line or into the gap will produce a two out RBI, and those are the best. That is if you are the offensive side of it. And a swing and a miss, and that's that. The Mets do pick up a run on this solo blast. It's an early 1-0 lead. Second inning, set to go. Now it's the DH, Gainer Diaz. Severino. Swing and a ball lined out towards center. Flashes the leather on the running catch. And there's one down. Now it's the shortstop, Jeremy Pena. Pena, one of the rare players from Rhode Island to be drafted by a major league team, Boog. His high school coach, who's been around the game nearly 40 years, calls Pena the best fielder he's ever seen. One out, base is empty. Popped up. McNeil drifts towards it. Makes the grab, and there's two gone. Here's Mauricio Dubon. He's kind of an outlier, especially when guys are consciously sacrificing contact to deliver power. And strike two. Yeah, his swing is so good. It's in the zone a long time. He gets the barrel to it a lot, and that produces more base hits. Outside. Yeah, that's ball two. Singy, one of the things that's interesting is that guys really don't worry about swing and miss from an offensive standpoint anymore. So when you see somebody who contacts the ball like this, do you think of that as plus value? Absolutely. If he's doing damage now, if he's rolling over and, and grounding out, then it's a different story. But yeah, if he can put the ball in the gaps or over the fence. Well, we'll hold that thought as that's the third out and we'll end the inning. Astros go down one, two, three. Still behind by a count of one to nothing. Back here at City Field. Now it's DJ Stewart. The right fielder. Yeah, and the domino effect of that is running up pitch counts on pitchers and then either getting them to a place of fatigue or getting into the bullpen perhaps before you get to those higher leverage arms at the back end. Line drive, and that should be extra bases. Makes the turn and heads for second. And he's got a leadoff double. We all saw it was hit hard, but how hard was it, Singy? StatCast is here with the answer. Yeah, Boog, it says the exit below was 113 miles per hour, and it looked every bit of it, didn't it? I mean, just an impressive swing of the bat, and clearly, he saw it out of the pitcher's hand, no problem. And now it's Mark Vientos. Right through there for a strike. One of the things that Jim Leland used to say when I was broadcasting with the Marlins, the longer a plate appearance goes for a batter, the more likely it is that something good will happen for the hitter. Man, it's second. And now it's even up. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. And the pitch. Vientos tries to hold up, appeal to first, and he held back according to Ricky Holiday. Back to work, 3-2 now. Up the middle. Got him on the off-balance throw. That's one out, the bottom of the second. The second base And now here's Jeff McNeil. Yeah. 
Stewart. The runner at second with one away. And there's a ball. That one fouled off. Two and two. And the right-hander deals. Got him swinging. That's out number two. You usually are going to see that inside fastball a little longer coming in from the opposite side, but that pitch really got in on him right there. I mean, that's a well-thrown pitch. Tough to do anything with that in terms of getting the hands through and the sweet spot of the bat to the baseball. And now Bader up to the plate. And he swings through that one. And the pitch. The other way. And that's just foul. Righty delivers. Swing, and that ball smashed on a line. Lays out and makes the play. Great diving catch to end the inning after the pitcher battles through a tough one. That'll fire up the dugout. Time to go hit. All set for the start of the inning. And here is number 10. Joey. It feels like we might be headed towards a rain delay if the weather doesn't ease up, Chris. Yeah, the umpire and crew are going to pay attention to how the weather is impacting this game. And the moment it becomes dangerous, I think, is the moment we'll be forced to take a break. Got it. And that's the first down. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher are on the same page right now. So digging in, Chaz McCormick. One down, base is empty. That one hooked foul. We haven't seen a break in the weather, and the umpires might be forced to make a decision soon. Yeah, I think so, Boog. I mean, everyone looking and wondering when they're going to stop play. It definitely it. feels close. He steps on the bag. First two batters retired here in the top of the third. And now the catcher comes up to him. The wide to kick the pitch. So a foul ball makes it one and two. The Mets up by a run. We're here in the top half of inning number three. And another ball. Hits and misses. It's a strikeout. One, two, three, go the Astros. They still trail one nothing. And we're back, set for the bottom of the third, and stepping in for New York, Francisco Lindor. The 2-1. Comes up empty, that's strike two. Right side. Tosses to first, Lindor retired. No, he didn't recognize changeup early enough. Got out in front a little bit, rolled over on it, and beat it into the ground. Brandon Nimmo now at the plate. The wind and the pitch. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Left hand batter waits. Fights it off, you'll see another. Though Chris, through the early stages, he hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. This one popped up. Foul ground, first base side. And it's caught for the out. It is interesting, though, when you consider the way the game is run now. Doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go that deep because teams are really aggressively building your bullpens. Two outs, space is empty. And now J.D. Martinez. 
And that's outside. Foul. We'll see another payoff pitch. Two outs, bases empty. Outside, and that is ball four. Oh, do you think you could draw a walk in the bigs if we gave you enough at bats? No, oh, that's a good First question. Um, I think that if they oh, gave the pitcher God. a false scouting report on me, yes, I think I could draw a walk. 1-1 one, one now. That catches the corner. And that's a strikeout looking. Called strike three and a fastball up in the zone. Mets leave one, but they lead it one to nothing. And welcome back to the ballpark. Start of the fourth, Jose Altuve up to hit here. Ball to strike. And a pop up right side foul territory. And there's one away. Now it's Alex Bregman. One down, base is empty. Pitch misses, and a count two and one. Swing and a line drive, base hit out of the center field. Well, oh, that'll make you feel good as a hitter right there. That's about as textbook as it gets. Got his stride and load out of the way early. He stayed inside that ball and squared it up out front. Man, that was like he was in the cage hitting off a tee. Runner on at first with one gone. And next to hit for Houston, you're Don Alvarez. Just two. missed. Two balls, one strike. Tying run is at first. Top half of inning number four. And no. that's off inside. the inside edge. And the count is three and one. Side and that is ball four. Well, interesting. He went with the off speed and walked the hitter. Man, you got to challenge the guy with the fastball. Now, here is Yaner Diaz. The 2 1. Next offering is outside. At the dish, looking to lift the ball in the air in this spot. Anything but the inning, inning double play, boot. Too low, ball four, and he's walked another. Well, the stage has been set for this offense, Boo. It's all about creating opportunities, and this is one of them right here. And now the shortstop, Jeremy Pena. Here's a 1-1. Swing and a miss, 98 on the gun. Spin rate's outstanding on that high fastball. Really tough to hit. The pitch. Fights that one away. Still one and two. Severino kicks deals. Got him looking. Huge strikeout there. Well, they were pretty much giving it to him right there. Playing the infield back, all you're looking for on offense is a simple ground ball. you got a tie ball game. Not sure what he was thinking up there. A strikeout look at is the last thing you want to see. Now you got to hope the next guy can pick you up and come through with a big two-out hit. Now it's going to be Mauricio Dubon. Worm burner into the outfield for a knock. One runs in. In there safely. And a 2-1 ball game now. Well, there you go. The RBI machine. Another clutch run scoring it back. 
Yeah, he's been so good in these situations. Call it clutch if you want, but his resume speaks for itself. First and second, two outs. Now the left fielder, two outs. And yeah, that's outside. And it's two and one. Tough spot right here, a couple runners on, two ball count. You can't nibble, but you have to execute and finish your pitch. If you leave something out over the plate, it's going to bring in some runs. In the air, left side. Sizes this one up. Makes the grab, and that'll end the inning. But two runs for him, and they jump ahead. And midway in the fourth, it's the Astros two and the Mets one. Here in Queens, John Chabi and Chris Singleton with you. And leading off the bottom of the fourth, Francisco Alvarez. Way outside, ball three. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. Lined into right. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. What a way. Man, that's one of those at bats where you have to remind yourself it's about the process. He did everything right right there. Nothing to show for it. But in your mind, you have to convince yourself that it was a very good at bat. The wind of the pitch. Inside just missed. Looks like he's being a little cautious with him in this at bat after doubling the first time up. Doesn't want to make another mistake. The pitch. That clips the zone. Two balls, two strikes. Well, we call that keyhole. Even though it's right there and looks pretty good, okay. if he doesn't love it, he's not going to swing that early in the count. Jump throw across his body. Awesome play there. And he looked a little tentative on that swing. Almost like he didn't get pitch recognition. And tried to slow his back down just to make contact. I'd rather see a guy swing through it instead of making weak contact and putting it in play. Have another pitch where maybe he can drive out of the ballpark. Mark Vientos will hit next. Here's a 1-1. And the slider just misses. Two ball, one strike. towards left center that is the inning back here at City Field we go to the top of the fifth leading off Chaz McCormick Chaz McCormick the pitch. And another ball. The 2 2. A little bit low. Recognize that changeup right out of the hand. Just spit on it. Got him looking for the K. Strike three called and a slider at the knees. At the plate is the Astros catcher. Base is empty one away. And we're at the top of the fifth. To third, Vientos fires across the diamond, and the first two set down on the top of the fifth. Well, oh, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Lets the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Here's the former MVP, Jose Altuve. And a swing and a miss. 
He's pitching well, ball but ball. not throwing a Two ton strike. of first pitch strikes. Usually doesn't work out for success, but. And a swing and a miss. Picks up strikeout number seven. Astros are down quietly as they're unable to add to their 2 1 lead. And we're back. Now it's the second baseman, Jeff McNeil. Leading off the floor of the net. The second baseman. Here's a 2 1. And that one ripped into right. Makes the catch one down. Harrison Bader up now for the Mets. Kicks and fires. That misses. Two and one. Double barreled action in the bullpen. Hunter Brown up and throwing. Blanco also throwing. Home team down a run. Last half of inning number five. Swing and a miss as he was out front. Swings and misses. Chase the fastball up the ladder for strike three. Well, that high forcing fastball has become such a staple as a strikeout pitch over the years. And what's so tough as a hitter is that you see it extremely well. The problem is the velocity and spin rate just happens to jump by you. You expand your zone, you don't stay tall on the backside, and you're really not even able to make contact. If you do, many times it's a pop up. Hit pretty well in the air out to center. Alvarez in position. And makes the play, and that's out number three. Top of the sixth inning. Here's Alex Bregman. Love it here at City Field. You know, it replaced Old Shea Stadium back in 2009. And Chipper Jones was really sad to see it go. It's actually the third home of the Mets since they started out at the Polo Grounds for two seasons before Shea was finished. A one, two. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. The one, two. Severino with another strikeout. It's almost like he's telling the guys in the bullpen, stand down, I got this. Here's Jordan Alvarez. Having a lot more success on the road this season. And the righty deals. Swing and a miss. Nice changeup. It really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. Fouls it off, still one and two. And another ball. That smash towards center. Bader settles under it and makes the catch. Two down. Man, he smoked that fastball. He's all over it. It's just frustrating when you can't get it to fall. Maybe next time up, he'll find a hole. And next is the designated hitter, Yainer Diaz. The wind of the pitch. In the air to left center. Martinez pulls it in on the run. Hunter Brown gets handed the rock out of the pen. Still a lot of game left, and this now game could go either way. So this is a big opportunity for him to get some important outs and try to help carry this lead into the later innings. So now here's the Mets DH, Brandon Nimmo. Designated hitter, Brandon Nimmo. 
Swings through that one for strike two. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Brian Abreu appears to be getting loose. Martinez also getting ready. Right-handed reliever. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. With that kind of velocity, an elevated fastball, even if it's still in the strike zone, can be tough for hitters to get on top of. And here is J.D. Martinez. One down, base is empty. Popped in the air. Left field. Settles underneath it. He makes the grab. And there are two down. Just pulled off now of it a little bit right base. there. That front shoulder coming open instead of staying closed. If he does that, he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left. And a pitch. In the air on the infield. Should have this one. And that is the inning. And the Mets go down one, two, three. They're down two to one. Welcome now, back. We're in the seventh. We have a pitcher on the mound, Number Adam zero. Adovino, Adam. out for the 30th time this year. Well, one run game. Here's the shortstop at the play. Jeremy Pena. Right side, hard hit. Toss to Alonzo. And the leadoff hitter set down to open the seventh. Now batting. The first baseman. Mauricio. So up next, Mauricio Dubon. Chris, baseball today, so many strikeouts, and they are available to pitchers. But this is a guy that puts the bat on the ball and is kind of different from the players that we see day in, day out. Wouldn't oh. chase that time. Action in the you Mets bullpen. Sean Manaya, the left-hander, up and throwing. Smith getting cranked up as well. Base is empty, one away. Here at the top half of inning number seven. outside three and one right through there for a strike three one count saying to himself I've got to get a fastball here just spins a get me over breaking ball to bring the count full Payoff pitch. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. And he deals. And a foul ball, he stays alive. At the belt and fires. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. pitch and down on strikes he didn't make it easy for him on the mound but they still get the strikeout he had him out in front which isn't easy to do against a hitter like this known for using the entire field just couldn't sit back long enough on that one here's the left fielder hit to third tosses to first and the Astros put down in order nothing doing there for Houston they lead it 2 one ready to go for the last half of the inning here's the catcher for the Mets Francisco Alvarez Oh, 
That one's in there, and the count is two and two. Swings and misses, struck him out. A big first out here in the seventh via the punch out. Yeah, it just does so much to change the outlook of an important inning like this. When you got the leadoff hitter so critical in setting the table when you got a tight game like this. So a strikeout really puts them on their heels. So up next for New York, DJ Stewart. Looking to get the tying run on base. Ball, that pitch is up. hit left side sends it across the first and that quickly two away if you want to be a great defense you have to deliver consistently it doesn't matter how many highlight real plays you make if you can't execute the small stuff just like we saw Mark Vientos up now for the Mets and that's off the inside edge and it's two and one Pulls that one foul. Two down, nobody on. And there's a rocket into the outfield. Around first and hustling for second. And now the tying run is in the scoring position. Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage counts where batting averages are just so much higher. Double into the gap, and that was a really nice swing to beat the inside pitch. He just beat him to the spot. Kept his hands tight inside that baseball, and that just allowed him to drive it into the alley right there. Now a pretty big at bat coming up with a chance to even this ball game up. Man in scored position with two away. And next for the... Meanwhile, this pitch gets away. Tag safe! He's in the third of the wild pitch. With a single base runner because of all the power, they are dangerous to tie this thing up or take the lead. Next pitch is downstairs. Harrison Bader waiting to hit for the Mets. Gets the outside corner with that one. Two outs. We'll see another payoff pitch. Swing and a ball hit out towards left center field. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And that is the third out of the inning. Met strand one. And our score remains 2-1. Here in Queens, and now the right fielder, Chaz McCormick. Chaz McCormick. Here comes a pitch. Ball two. That's a strike across the top of the zone. Hit hard, that gets through. Man aboard on the leadoff single. 
Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Just a simple ground ball the other way, but had eyes on it, man. Sometimes that's all you need to do. Just let the ball travel, put the ball in play, and just hope it finds a hole. Here's the catcher. Left-hand hitter waits. And strike two. Yeah, you can see he just kind of stabbed at that one instead of just keeping his hands soft and absorbing the baseball with the bat. Rudder at first with no outs here. That time. At this point in the game, you cannot issue free passes. He's going to have to challenge this hitter. Hitter's got to be ready to swing it. And a payoff pitch. Hammered down the line. Could be extra bases. McCormick, round second on his way to third. Coming home. Relay throw home. And he's out. A lot of real estate to cover on that play defensively. A long throw to the cutoff man, and then a lot of ground to make up as well on the relay. But an excellent job of execution and getting that out of the dish as he tried to make it home all the way from first base. So the batting order turns over. And the batter now, Jose Altuve. Kicks and deals. Ball two. In the dirt, but kept close. And the runner holds. The 2-1. Right through there for a strike. One out and a runner at second, and we're in the top of the eighth. And now it's three and two. Really good take, especially with two strikes. And he grounds one back up the middle. McNeil gets it to first. And they get out to Bay for the out. Drew Smith comes on now. Well, he struggled quite a bit, so this is another opportunity to get on the right track. He's given up more than one hit per inning pitch so far this season. And here is Alex Bregman. And this is a big opportunity for him to pick up his teammate right here. Instead of letting the hitter get his arms extended, tied him up a little bit, slightly up, slightly in. The pitch. Bows it back with two strikes. Runner at third, two away. Still two and two after the foul ball. Max and misses. It's a strikeout. So the Astros leave one, but they still lead it two to one. Now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Rafael Montero. He doesn't get a lot of strikeouts compared to other relievers, so he relies on getting that soft contact and the defense doing work behind him. They'll have to be on their toes with him on the bump. Well, one run game. And stepping in for New York, Harrison Bader. Harrison Bader. 
It's in and out of his glove. And he's going to make it to first. And we'll see how they score it. Lead off man aboard on the air, and that puts your pitcher in a little bit of a tough spot right away to start the inning, not where you want to be. So we'll see if he's able to work around it and pick the defense up. Back to the top of the Mets order, and now Francisco Lindor. Swing and a miss. One and two. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. Holding on to a one-run lead here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. Runs it up to 96 to record the punch out. Next is the designated hitter, Brandon Nimmo. Definitely wants to stay out of the double play here. Ball on the ground in the infield. Should be an inning ending double play. Right hander kicks deals. Oh, save! That's a stolen base. Well, it seems like 90 feet is such a big deal in a tight one-run game like this one. Maybe it's a little bit risky, but they felt good about it, and it paid off. Let's see if they can turn this into a big run. Laser! Base hit! Headed for the play. He'll score in the tie. It's 2-2. Such great concentration. Everybody on their feet, knowing that you can come through with a good swing. And there he doesn't try to do too much. Here is J.D. Martinez. And the pitch. Swing and a high fly ball out there towards left field. Squeezes it. The first baseman, Pete Alonso. And now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonso. If you don't get ahead in the count, you can forget about having any success against him. Two outs. And a count, one and two. Two gone, the possible go-ahead run at first. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. But the RBI single pushes across a run. And we're deadlocked now at two apiece. Back after this on the show. And welcome back to the ballpark. We go to the ninth. Now it's Jordan Alvarez. And that one is inside. Stirring in the bullpen for the Mets. Sean Manaya preparing to come on if needed. Riding to the plate. Fouled off. He was late. And the pitch. Checks his swing. Now to appeal to third. Yes, he did. Down he goes on strikes. Well, we saw a solid effort out of their starter, and the bullpen is following suit. It's just a good day as a manager or as a pitching coach when you can hand the ball off to multiple arms and get stability from all of their performances. Ball to strike. The pitch. And another ball. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. And it's even up. Wow, good luck catching up to that one. One down, base is empty. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Oh, 
always feels amazing getting a job done when the team needs you to come through. It's just bigger than your own individual stats. Just kept it simple. Played Pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from. And there's just no one there to knock it down. One down, runner at first. Stepping in, Jeremy Pena. Headed towards the corner. Martinez moves towards it. Brings it in. Mauricio Dubon up next for the Astros. So he came up clutch earlier in this ball game and really just needs to take the same approach. Think hard right back up the middle. This is a batter who loves to produce late in ball games. He doesn't shy away from the big moment. All tied up here at the top of the ninth. Next offering upstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Just off the outside part of the plate. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score it. And here it comes. Into center. Bader should have it. Brings it in. And that's the third out. So one hit is all they get. Five, six, and seven will lead things off in the bottom of the ninth. We are tied 2-2. Two, two. Back now as they hand the ball to a fresh arm to start the bottom of the ninth. Brian Abreu. Big swing and miss stuff right here, Boo. Averaging more than one strikeout per inning this season. So far, he's been pretty electric. Francisco Alvarez getting ready to hit. And the right-hander deals. Swing and a miss. And it's 2-2. Two two. Righty delivers. Foul ball, another 2-2 two -two upcoming. Kicks and fires. That, that one just good. misses the outside corner. Full count now. Just missing off the plate there, according to the umpire. And out there on the mound, maybe trying to get an explanation. Can't say he's convinced, but it looks like he's accepted it. The pitch. Swing and a miss. That's a strikeout. Slider got him for strike three. Now that slider was way out of the zone. And for me, it just comes down to not seeing the pitch out of the hand, not tracking it into the zone, and then also being a little bit anxious, not confident in your two-strike approach. And so when a guy's in that position, you get him to commit early, and a lot of times you get the swing and miss, as you did right there. Next to hit, DJ Stewart. And there's a strike. Good heater at 98. The one two that's down and in a slider missed bases empty one away we're in the last half of inning number nine got him swinging chance to strike out the side now you talk about the benefits the advantages of relievers who can come in and get the swing and miss whether it's inherited runners or maybe a little jam that they get into themselves knowing that they can miss the bat tell you what that's huge and can change the ball game Mark Vientos, the next to hit. Trying to send this extra innings. In there at the knees. Three and two now. Right-handed reliever. Struck him out swinging. 
That's the third out, and we'll play extra innings in this one. Impeccable command in that one. Three batters, three strikeouts. That's electric stuff out there on the mound. We're now back in a new arm on the mound as we start extras. Sean Manaya. And they felt it was time to bring on a left-handed reliever from the pin with the lefty. Go ahead, run on base. Now the left fielder. Man at second, nobody out. Chris, certainly one of the things in his head is trying to get the runner over. Yeah, the way that we see the game played today, though, guys are not sacrificing as much just to get that runner across. They're really looking at doing damage. Slugging is the name of the game. Nice grab. It's never fun going back to the dugout after hitting a line drive that finds a glove, but you will get some high fives. You know, when you make great contact, you feel like you've done everything right. But in this game of baseball, not everything is in your control. Chaz McCormick. Looks like they want to set up the double play. Intentional walk will make it first and second with one gone. Two on, one out. At the plate is the Astros catcher. And he bunts, but that's foul. Strike two. Well, if he's going to do something special right here, it's going to have to happen with two strikes. Swing and a ball chopped up. And the infield fly is called. So the Houston lineup turns over. Jose Altuve up next for the Astros. And now the lefty. And that's off the inside edge. Two balls and a strike. The pitch. On the ground to third. Zips it across, and they get out two day for the out. That's the third out. Two left for the Astros. Score remains 2-2. Two -two. And we're back. On right to the bottom of the 10th. Jeff McNeil stands in. Oh, how he'd love to walk it off right here. Man at second. Swing and a miss. As he was out front that time. Swings and misses. Struck him out. And now the center fielder, Harrison Bader. Well, first base open. Really no reason to pitch to this hitter right here. Put him on. Have the force at second first. Perhaps getting any ending double play. Next offering is downstairs. Francisco Lindor up next for the Mets. With the winning run standing at second. And we're in the last half of the tenth. That's to third. And Bader is set down. Well, there's a lot riding on that at bat right there. Nice job of the pitcher to bear down, make the pitch, get the ground ball. Excellent piece of work. Back to the top of the lineup, and now it's Frankie Lindor. And there's no doubt that they'll feed off the energy from this crowd, right? I mean, yeah, I'd say the intensity level has gone up a few notches for sure. The shortstop takes the ball. Winning run stands at second. Chopper right side. Dubon. He handles it himself. Three up, three down, inning over. Mets leave one, and this game is still tied at two and two.